Hey kids, what's up? I am on a way to a group ride, but I figured I could use this time to make what's normally a boring video. So um, I want to talk about a topic that's a bit unusual. It concerns security of your vest board. Now that vests have become a lot more popular than a year or two ago, it is becoming more and more likely that you will encounter other people with vest one wheels and the danger is getting bigger and bigger that somebody, especially a new user who doesn't quite understand what they're doing, will go and connect to your board and change your settings. And that is really easily possible. Um, yeah, there is a pairing feature which allows you to pair your vest tool with your controller but that feature is seriously flawed a it's not secure at all and b it also can lock yourself out if you happen to switch phones or you want to use somebody else's phone and uh, then you're stuck not knowing what the uuid is so it's really not a great solution I would like to be able to switch to any device, quickly enter a PIN number and be on my way and make any change that I need. And at the same time, I don't want to worry about somebody else connecting to my board and running the motor wizard or IMU calibration or making any change for that matter. So, um, what I have done is I have added a pin locking mechanism, a simple four digit pin that you basically store in your vest that is persistent when you power cycle the board. And that pin basically has to match what you have in your app. So for example, in float control, Obviously, this is where I added this functionality first. It isn't yet available in the vest tool, but in float control, you can basically now connect to this new special firmware and you can enter your pin and that way unlock your board. And the way it's designed is that by default, once you have the new firmware, it will still remain unlocked and there won't be a pin so um, the board basically has no extra security until you enter your pin in fact there is now an additional vulnerability because if you're too lazy to enter your own pin then somebody else could connect to your board set a pin and then lock you out so obviously if you do switch to this new firmware then it is very important that you set a pin as soon as possible. And then when you connect with your board, I mean, when you connect with your desk app, let's say float control, then it will remember the pin and automatically unlock your board if it's locked or it will uh, at least allow you to do whatever you need to do. And anybody else who needs to connect will not be able to do so. Actually, the way I've done it is that you can still connect because you can't really prevent that anyway because the locking is not at the Bluetooth level, but it's at the vest level. So it will connect and it will consume the Bluetooth connection, but they will only to be able to get read access, meaning they can see your stats, they can see uh, real-time data, but as soon as they try to do anything that would change your settings, they get blocked. And those commands essentially are ignored. And that's pretty much all that we really need. I don't need NSA level security here. We just need something to protect ourselves from you know, new users who don't know what they're doing accidentally connect to the wrong board because guess what when you connect for the first time and there is 20 boards around they all are have 
they all have the same name to them. So people that haven't bothered naming their own board won't even know which board is theirs. So that's another thing you should always do, name your board. That way, when you uh, connect in a crowded environment, some big group ride with multiple desks, then you don't have to guess which board is yours and accidentally maybe connect to the wrong one. So that's been a long rant. Sorry about this. I'm going to show you a quick demo of what this looks like in, uh, in real life and um, that'll be it. It is, all of it is available on pv.dev. If you search for the word pin on pv.dev, it will be probably the first hit, and you will be able to both download the firmware from there that you need, and uh, the float control version that you need is already in the App Store, so you don't need to do anything special. If you are an Android user, then uh, I'm sorry, but uh, as far as I know, at least as of May 2023, there is no option for you guys yet. So you will have to be patient until somebody comes around and adds this functionality to the best tool or maybe to other apps like Floaty, for example. So. Here is the demo. All right, here is what it looks like. When I connect to the board, it determines the state. And this one sees it shows me a red unlock symbol here. If I go into settings, then I can see the details. So it says unlocked and no pin. This is the normal state you would expect if you had just installed the firmware. And um, if you tap on the, uh, on the lock, it'll tell you in more detail what's going on. So now what we got to do is we got to set the pin. So I'm going to just set 1111. I can also choose if I want to write lock on boot, and I'm going to do that. That way, if I power cycle the board, it comes up locked. So I'll set that. And now it is uh, the pin is set, but it is still unlocked. So now I can lock it. And now the lock symbol turns green. And now we're all good to go. So now when, um, whenever I connect to the board, it will show up like this with the green lock symbol. And if I need to do anything to the board or... Here, if I use float control to make changes, then it will just um, automatically unlock the board. So if I click, oh shit, fuck. <laughs> All right, let me do that again. Um, yeah, so you can see it unlocks the board automatically, so I can do custom shaping as much as I need. Is that the wrong side? Oh shit. All right, so um, yeah, so when I do, when I enable custom shaping, then it automatically unlocks the board, so you don't have to worry about it. The only time you have to consciously unlock the board is if you want to use the vest tool. So if I, because right now, um, if I close custom shaping, then it locks it again. And uh, if I now disconnect and switch to the vest tool, so here is the vest tool. If I connect to my board, this is still a standard 6.2 vest tool, which means that it has no idea what a pin is and it doesn't know what's going on. So it'll just connect to the board and um, at some point it'll just fail to uh, get the app UI. I'm not sure exactly why, but um, that's typically the symptom that you would get. So if you want to make any changes with, um, with the VEST tool, you have to unlock it first in float control, 
then everything works just as before in the vest tool. So if I, no, I guess I should have disconnected first. If I disconnect here, if I now connect to the vest tool, then, I mean, to the float, to float control, you see here it's locked. If I unlock it and now disconnect from the board, Jesus, everything is so overgrown here. Um, so I disconnected here. And now I'm going into the vest tool. I connect. And now everything should behave as it norm normally does with any other firmware. Let's see. Yep, custom config loaded. All right, so now we can do whatever we need to do and it won't give us any trouble. So now we're going to try connecting to a board that we didn't pin lock. So, connecting. Uh -oh. And float control complains that there's a pin mismatch and basically tells you to update the pin in the settings. And if this is not your board, then you should probably disconnect and look for your board. So now if, however, I know that this is my board and I just used a different phone to lock it and I don't have a pin set for it yet, and you can see here my pin here is zero, so I didn't have a pin set. And I'm going to try my pin, 1111, and set it. And there we go. It is now... Um, locked still but the pin is okay meaning i can now do everything i need to do with this board so if i go and enter custom shaping it will automatically unlock the board and if i quit custom shaping it locks it again so now i can do whatever i need if i want to change the pin i can do that as well but you can only do it if the board is unlocked so you unlock the board, you set a different pin, and maybe set right lock on boot. And there we go. So now I can lock the board again, and there we go. Um, yeah, pretty simple. And hopefully I don't have any bugs in there and nobody gets locked out of their board but uh, so far I haven't managed to lock myself out on four different boards so I'm pretty confident that it's working.